remember, if you've not already ran the JLDB Build 11, make sure you do that before you do any of these labs because it will have the employees table that you're going to need, especially the bonus category from. If you've forgotten how to do that, I'm going to remind you. Highlight that. You can just go right click and paste and it will run. So mine just ran all that. Again, you should have ran this before you got this far, but in case you forgot, there's how to do that. Just press enter after the commit and it's good to go. I want to begin chapter 11, figure 11-6 page 389. We've already completed the first few in the chapter. This one is data in the employees table. I'm going to run the select and here it picks based on last name, uh, the salary of the month, your bonus from the employees table and includes the employee number. Employee number, last name, monthly salary, and the bonus. Again, if you try to run this without having run the 11, you will get an error looking for this field called bonus. I want to also demo to you number 117 on page 390. This is using the average. The average function ignores the null values. Select average bonus from employees. So this guy had no bonus. So it's going to look at all these and it's going to give it an average of just the ones that did not have a zero in it. And average those out. This one is figure 11.8, page 390, embedding the NVL in a group. Selecting your average NVL bonus zero places from employees. Okay, you came up with an average of 15.20. Notice that's just a little bit different calculation. Now I'm going to go back and let's look at the count function. Two purposes. These return the number of rows containing a value in the identified fields and the count non-null values is rows containing null values in the fields aren't included. So it's the number of rows that has a value and the count by default does non-null values. So there has to be something in a field. However, if you wish to count those ones with null, to count rows containing null values, use an asterisk rather than a field name. Here's an example. Select count with an asterisk from books. A second example might be select count the field name ship date from orders. Okay, Here we go count function this is non-null values include the column name in an argument to count the number of occurrences. Select we're going to do a count the distinct that means no two alike count the categories from books. We run this and there are eight different categories in books. Again chapter 11 figure 1110 page 391 Here's the one I meant to run. Chapter 11, figure 11, 9. Count the distinct options. Ran that and we got eight categories that are very different. This one includes an argument to count the number of rows. Select count number from orders where the ship date is null. This is number 111. I'm going to back and run 11, 9 for you and 10 and then I'll run this one from the command line. Here is 9 using the count function with the distinct option. It's the one I had just ran a minute ago. This one is the flawed one. It's a flawed query. The function count all the rows of the category. Aha! So there were some duplicate categories but it counted those as separate. So you need to be aware of that. This one was the place where I really needed to use that. This one is actually a flawed one. It doesn't give the right results. Let's look at 11.11. 11.11, 11, page 392, using the count asterisk function to include null values. Select the count asterisk from orders where the ship date is null. Okay, there's six of them that have no ship date listed. This would be a good thing to run to check for errors. Uh-huh. Different results. Notice the one here got six the one here got zero. Why is that? Here you're counting the ship date from orders where the ship date is null. This up here specified something very different than this. So this one is the one that's running the ship as they say. Whereas the one up here select the count everything from orders where the ship date is null. This one gave you the correct results. So do be aware how those can make a big difference. Let's talk about max. 
returns the highest or the maximum value from the selected field, ignores the null values. An example, select max customer number. What's our largest customer number? You would believe that's the last one we added. From customers. It's an example of max. All right, this is 1113 from your textbook. Returns the largest value. Select max, the retail, minus the cost. Again, these are fields in the table. We're going to call that the highest profit from the books table. It returned $41.95. Again, this is 1113 on 393. When I run that, I get the same results. Again, you're subtracting retail from cost, but I'm finding the largest difference, and it's $41.95. Something you might also find interesting here is to have it to return the title of the book so that you could tell and kind of as a verification process. Sometimes remember just to give the answers doesn't tell the whole story. So do remember that unless you're sure of the query you're running. Put something else in so they can return a value so you can check your results. This one is 1114. So this is a common aggregation error. It's caused by both aggregates, the max and the non-aggregate column title being used. Let's show you what happens. Here's title, which is single. Here's max, gives you an error. Not a single group function. It's erring on the word title. So it's kind of throwing us out saying you can't do this. This one is 1115 from page 394. Using the max function on character data. Select, we're doing the max title from books. The walkway to cook. So it looked for the longest title in your books table and return that. This is the end of section two and I'll pick up with section three and talk about minimum.